Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to episode four of the Mind Heist podcast. In this episode, we talk about going to university, our individual experiences. Is it worth going anymore? How can you pay for it? What are the different options? And we mention a few stories from ourselves and others of uh, kind of out of the box ways of going about it. Not to mention a bit of a harissa at the end. So enjoy the episode and uh, hope to see you as a regular listener. Assalamu alaikum. Muhammad, this week we'll talk about education since it's a popular topic. Everyone wants to talk about university, uni loans. Is it worth, you know, in the UK it's like £9,000 a year, I think. Uh, And uh, is it worth it and all of that? And will you get a job and all that stuff? So uh, maybe before we jump in, why don't we just talk a bit briefly about our, our experience in this topic so people know. Yeah, uh, let me see. So basically, so, Mohammed, you have to give us an audio CV. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Okay, uh, let's let's think back. So I went to junior school. I went. To, wait, where do we start? Should we go to really far back? Let's just, let's just start with uni, I think, because okay. we could actually do school for well, another college, episode. Maybe college is quite important. So okay, I, yeah. I, I I did two years at college, and then after my two years at college, I got into. A university in Kingston or it's Kingston University whatever it's called in London okay. um, but that was during the time when university fees were about £3,000 mm. and uh, at the time I don't think I was very mentally prepared or practically prepared to go and live in London so oh. in my head I thought why don't I save some money spend another year at college bump my grades up and then go to uni closer to home in Brighton oh really okay. yeah so I did that you know I made my decision stayed another year got the grades I needed to get after a lot of hard work but that was also the year that the uni fees shot up to nine oh, grand a year <laughs> yeah so I didn't end up saving anything um, yeah. uh, what, what happened then after, so what did you do in uni I did criminology and sociology yeah so you did is that three years yeah yeah that was three years and I guess up to now, well, that was I graduated in 2015, so I'm one of the rare few people that actually went on to get a job in the field that I studied in. Okay. Um, but not a lot of people do, and we'll get onto that, I suppose. How yeah. about yourself? Okay, so me, I uh, college. Um, I mean, uh, I wasn't in the UK, so I didn't really have college. I just did. I did AS levels, right? You know the what you do in the first year of college right Uh, so I did those because I was in a British uh, curriculum school um, but then I got into uni without having to do the actual A level the A2 part uh, because just because I didn't go to a British uni right so I went to uni uh, I did my undergrad in Abu Dhabi in a French uni which is like the oldest uni in France but they opened a branch in Abu Dhabi it's called La Sorbonne so I went to that uni, I did undergrad there. I did geography just uh, as a degree. Um, then uh, when I, once I finished that, that was three years. Once I finished that, I did a master's degree in uh, oh, wow. like urban design and um, uh, town planning. Uh, I did that in London in UCL. So um, yeah, I did that. Then <laughs> I've also done a teacher training, which is like pretty much a degree in it of itself, yeah, yeah. Uh, PGCE. So I did that. I think I finished that in 2014. So since then, alhamdulillah, I haven't done any more degrees. So, uh, wow. so I've done like three, been to three different unis and three different kind of degrees and stuff. Wow. I never knew that about you. I always, oh, thought, really? you were, yeah. I always thought you were like straight born, bred, raised, educated in England. So mm. I didn't have a clue. I suppose when I met you that one time, I, I didn't really guess either. I didn't mm. really ask. I just assumed. <laughs> it's all in the accent, isn't it? Everyone thinks, everyone's surprised that I didn't grow up in the UK because of the accent. But, yeah, yeah, you've got very, very good English. Like you wouldn't even, you know, I wouldn't even yeah. bat an eyelid. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, so... Um, but what so about when, now? What yeah. about now? So what, what about so now? has your Oh, am I degree, using it? Yeah, you using it. Are you using any of those? Am I using it? Right now I'm not because I'm self-employed. Um, mm. Probably when I was working, probably the master's degree helped in terms of 
uh, increase in salary and um, I guess it kind of proves you're smart if you went to UCL in a way it's like a bit of a wow factor so that might have helped but nothing direct um, yeah I mean I, I could have be, been uh, gone on to be a teacher uh, because I was qualifying everything I could have taught multiple subjects uh, but I didn't go on to do that but so yeah I so currently you could say I'm not it. using it but you could be using it as like a um, a backup plan, I suppose. Because of course, being yeah. self-employed, as, as we spoke about before in another mm. episode, it has a lot of its risks, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so now I'm not using it. Maybe I will. I don't plan on using it, but we'll see. Inshallah. Yeah, so when you, when you went to uni, like, well, firstly, when you're in college, did you just always have it in your mind you're going to uni or? I guess at the time, I didn't know any other, like, I didn't know any different. Because um, sometimes they do a bad job of explaining to you what the process is and what your options are, and it depends right. on your. It depends on what you want to do as well, and what's mm. best, like what path you want to take. Uh, as far as, to be honest, I didn't really think as hard enough about what I was going to study because previously I was aiming to do um, medicine, uh, but at A level. Uh, I just didn't do very well at like chemistry and biology and stuff. Right. Uh, and so <laughs> a lot of colleges, because they just want the, uh, they just want the pass rate on their own certificates. They right. want their stats for their students to be, oh, look, all our students passed. They basically want to get you out of the door as soon as possible into any uni doing anything. Mm. You know, so I remember not necessarily being pushed to do criminology, but I remember just being pushed to pick something so that mm. I could actually get into uni. That was like their big, because at the end of the day, once a college has put you into uni, that's it. They can just like dust their hands off you and say to, you know, whoever their management is, look at us. We've got this many students into uni, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, I did that. I picked the degree I did. And um, yeah, I suppose, you know. First, so in your mind, there was only one option, which is to go to uni after college. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, a lot of that is from influence from, you know, your family as well, because a lot of your family members might see that as the most classic, you know, safest bet is to pick that and the best yeah. choice for you, you know. So a lot of the time you just, you're, you don't know any better. So you're just picking, you know, the advice that your family give you. And have yeah. the, like I can say that it worked out for me, Uh but like I could tell you, like last year, I was probably thinking this isn't working out for me at all. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So yeah. you know, Qadr Allah, it depends what Allah has written for you, and you just yeah. have to make the most of the situation you're in. Yeah, I think I'm the same as you. Like I didn't. I mean, also because I wasn't in the UK, you could you could say I didn't really have any other options because out here it's either you know it's just uni basically. There's no yeah. um, what do they call them? Like Is apprenticeships. It like, yeah, apprenticeships. Yeah. Uh, some, what's that like vocational stuff, you know, like practical yeah, stuff? Yeah, so you do that in like, if you're doing like plumbing, electrician, mechanic, yeah. stuff like that. So yeah. yeah, I suppose, I don't know what it, how it is in the UAE. If they have, how do you go down that road? I don't know. Well, the thing is, the thing about UAE is most people, if they're in school here, they usually go back home to go uni. Yeah. Um, but my kind of unique, I actually applied for undergrad in the UK but um what was it oh yeah that was it they didn't they didn't give me home status so i would have had to pay oh, yeah. like uh triple or something what uh normal uk uh citizens pay so that was one thing putting me off also the uni i applied to here in abu dhabi it, it was like really it's a good uni firstly secondly i wanted to study that subject anyway thirdly um i got a scholarship so i didn't have to pay anything oh that's brilliant that so, um, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's the thing, but so everyone, usually they leave. I'm actually a bit weird in that I stayed here to go uni. A lot of people don't stay here to go uni, yeah. like, especially, uh, if you're British, definitely you wouldn't stay here. Usually you'd go back to the UK or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I stayed as for like Emiratis that uh, recently that they started opening like vocational, like technical colleges or whatever they call them. Yeah. Where you could do like more practical stuff. And then of course there's uni, which, uh, you know, there's private unis and there's public ones. So you might pay or you might not pay. Um, so that's their options. But as for non Emiratis, like most people, they might go to a private uni here, but a lot of people just leave. Yeah. 
Mm. Um, but so as someone living here, I didn't really think of any other options other than going to uni. I, I really had no idea about uh, these kind of more practical courses or like these kind of diploma things you can do. I had no idea about that. And my dad was like very into like uh, go uni, it's good and all of that. My dad's like pretty academic and stuff. Yeah. So, so that's why I took that path. And it suited me, I think, in the end anyway, because mm. I ended up being quite academic anyway. Well, the bottom line is it does depend on what your goal is because... Yeah, if you did want to do something vocational, then uni isn't always the best place. Yeah. But for anything else, like I'd always, there's there's always three steps. And I think you've got your vocational things where you're going to go and do like your apprenticeships and your th stuff like that. Then you've got those people that just want to do their own business, start, you know, self-employed. And then you've got the university route. But in my personal opinion, I believe that those two last ones, you can just do them at the same time. Yeah, definitely. I think the best time to start a business is probably when you're at uni because you've got you're working to do your academic stuff and you've also got so much more free time to like surprising people at uni might not think they have any free time. But yeah. if I look back at it, I'm thinking that's like now that I'm married, I've got a kid and I'm working full time. Now I'm thinking I've got no hope to run any additional side business because yeah, I just haven't true. got the time. But it's back true. then, you know, get your coursework done, get your essays done, whatever you need to do done. And then, okay, let me uh, do something on the side. And, you know, like, because uh, my sisters are quite young and they're going through like, you know, they're teenagers. So they're going through that kind of, what do I pick? What do I do? What's the path I should take? Yeah. And sometimes they do have like their hobbies that they want to do and they want a job in that hobby or they want a job in that career. And I've told them like... Personally, I said, like, yeah, if you can go to uni, go to uni or do, if you want to do something in your field, then you can do that on the side. And then maybe one day that side thing will be so successful that it will take over your main yeah. thing, you know? Yeah, so, that's a good point. Well, it's, it's, it is a, is a big decision to make, I suppose. And the thing is, I do believe that they, they make people, they make kids especially, pick these life changing things at such a young age mm. like if i was put back and made to pick you know what i needed to study i don't know maybe even three four years after i was made to pick them i probably would have made better decisions mm, yeah but you know yeah. you you get put into gcse at about i don't know how old like 14 yeah 14 I 14 think. years old you're told to make choices that limit theoretically you. yeah they limit you and they affect your entire progression in your entire life before you've even mm. seen the world mm. you know yeah um what was i gonna say about uh t -t 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 yeah i i chose to study geography because i knew i wanted to study it i was interested in it literally yeah that was the reason i i went to uni i was like i'm gonna go uni you want to study geography why do you want to study geography because i like it it was simple as that yeah to me. it's always i actually i actually wasn't thinking about careers too much i i knew that uh, geography is a bit too broad for a career so I knew I'd probably have to do a master's degree or I or I could be a teacher but it wasn't the first thing I was thinking about because also I went to uni when I was 17 as well so I was a bit younger so I was just thinking about what am I interested in and what do I like and stuff and I did like the A-level thing in geography and it was good so that's literally why I picked it. Uh, but what what caused you to pick criminology? You said your college pushed you to do that? <laughs> I wish I had a good answer. <laughs> Your college Honestly, pushed you, right? Sort of. Like, I remember just sitting there having to make, like, the deadline for making decisions was so close and I had to do something. And I remember scrolling through the list yeah. and just sort of, okay, how about that? But yeah. mainly, also, <laughs> though, also, I'm forgetting, I, because college made me pick sociology to study in college. Yeah. Because after I, like, not done too well on, on the sciences, I had to basically pick something else to carry on in college mm. so like there wasn't actually much on offer so i picked that and i ended up being really really good at it like okay. top of my class and that's what influenced my decision because right. I, it was something i'd never really even looked into before i didn't really know much about it but when i was in there i was just flying through like a stars a's a like and i'm not saying it was easy because there was people in my class that were doing really bad Right, but I don't know. I just sort of it just sort of clicked with me, so I sort of pursued it because I guess I was good at it. So you you were in the right general area, though. Like if you were good and you were interested in sociology, like criminology comes into there. So yeah. 
so there was a module there was a criminology module in right. the sociology and then when i went to uni the course that they do in brighton was criminology and sociology it was like a joint course okay so it does play into it yeah so what's after going to uni and graduating what was like what do you take from it like what what do you remember about it now a few years later um god good question uh i guess oh god i see that's the thing if you were to start quizzing me i wouldn't be able to answer much but there's like theories and ideas mainly it's theories mm. and ideas that you kind of carry with you yeah. there's dis discussions that you've had there about like you know the social world is what carries on with you like now that i so literally the past week mm. i got a job in the field that i studied in you know oh, bro. And, yeah alhamdulillah and that's why that's why this this episode has been late because it's all my fault so if anyone wants to moan to anyone it's it's me <laughs> but yeah but um what was i gonna say yeah so yeah the past week so before that i was working in just you know your the, the job that i was working in back when i was at uni just to sort of get by um so it took a while you know from 2015 up till now it's yeah. a long time and you know there is and, and and recently i spoke to people that i'd studied with in my that were in my course yeah. And, you know, one of them is working in, you know, a cafe, another one's working in a fish and chip shop, uh, you know, another one's... No way. Yeah, another one's working in retail, another one, you know, so a lot of people, they either, I mean, I don't know what the, the, the culture is behind their, their thought process, but a lot of people go to uni just for the experience. Okay. A lot of people have no interest in pursuing a career. They just want to, you know, have a piece of paper and say, oh, look what I've done. Yeah. Yeah, so there are people like that, but I suppose we can only approach this from an angle of career perspective. So, um, yeah, I guess it's it, it's not easy to find a job in your field in this day and age. But well, that what's does... your experience, bro? What do you mean? My experience in how? Well, let me answer it myself and then you understand what I mean. Go for so, it. So in terms of experience going to uni, I'll just talk mostly about underground. Uh -huh. uh, for me, uh, what I, when I think about those three years, I think about uh, like loads of changes. Um, I remember at, at the end of the first year, I'm thinking I'm like a 100% different person to the year before. And then in second year, I felt the same way. And in the third year, I felt the same way. I just remember thinking, wow, just like six months ago or, or 12 months ago, I was so like, you could say undeveloped hmm. and now i'm like wow now i think completely different but then just six months after that i'd be thinking wow like i'm different again and it was probably the most rapid growth i ever had in my life in terms of just six months previous i remember how i used to think and i and i could look back and think wow like i've changed so much so that's one thing that definitely pops into my head in terms of the whole uni experience. Part of that is because I was living on my own. Um, part of that is probably because I was in a French uni. So in a French uni, you're not going to find people from the UK and America and Canada. and You're going to find people from French speaking countries, right? So like uh, North Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, France itself. Uh, that was, and there were quite a few other Arabs like uh, Shamis. Yeah, so it was a completely different uh, social experience as well for me. So that caused me to grow as well and learn about other uh, cultures and stuff. Um, and then uh, the other thing I kind of take from it is I just remember thinking of how much free time I had and how little I took advantage of it. And that's kind of a regret I have uh, thinking of those those years as well. Yeah. But like, that's what I meant. It's just like overall experience. Yeah. Well, How do you remember that time? See, for me, I think I was quite disillusioned with the whole thing because, mm. uh, well, I didn't go anywhere like you did. So I didn't live on my own. So for me, it was just like another classroom, you know? Right, yeah. Um, I guess and at the end of the day, because of the amount of money you're paying, I, the, th the, the first thing that bothered me was... How can they triple the prices, but <laughs> there I don't see the the results. You know, I go in every day and I'm seeing PowerPoint slides that I can just access at home. Towards yeah. the end of my you know uni career, I didn't need to go in anymore because I didn't see the point because yeah. everything was on the internet. So I could literally come stay at home and do the work at home, and I mm -hmm. came out with a decent grade anyway. Yeah. You know? 
So, so you weren't impressed. I wasn't impressed, no, because I don't. I just think it's not worth the, the price you're paying. Right. Just like maybe when it was three grand, fair enough, and that goes with a lot of people that I've spoken to, whether they're studying engineering or you know biomedicine, whatever it is, the amount of money that they're paying just doesn't reflect because a lot of a lot of people now are just more concerned with the experience that they have. Like my wife recently went to for a, a job application and in her uh, interview, there was another uh, lady that was applying and she had a PhD Oy. and she was sitting there applying for an apprenticeship. <laughs> wow. Do you understand? Like, yeah. What, what's what's going on? Everyone's after, like everyone values experience now over just the mere piece of paper. Like, uh-huh. yeah, if you've got experience and the piece of paper, then brilliant. But mm. you know, I've always thought of uh, like two people. One person goes in with just all experience. Another one person goes in with just a piece of paper. Who gets hired? Mm. You know, mm. well, Alan. But it's just something to think about. So you, so basically, you're in college. College is normal. Like most people go college. When you go uni, you need certain grades. There are certain standards to get in, to get accepted, yeah. all of that. Then you get there, and you're on top of that. You're paying a lot, and yeah. then you're so you, you expect it to be a whole another level to college, and yeah. then it just wasn't, right? Yeah, essentially. Like I, like at first, I was like, oh, there's a lot of people here, and all the desks are different, and mm. you know, this is a big hall. And then mm. slowly you're just like, this is very basic material and very basic, mm. like little things like, oh, I have to pay to get things printed out. Like, haven't I paid enough? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. little things like that. It was just crazy. Mm. But although I know, that's just my experience. I don't know if anyone else has felt the same. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, I, mean, I, think, I guess it's like many individual experiences. Yeah. I think the money thing is something we have to talk about, no doubt, because yeah. it's, it's a dilemma for a lot of people. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to that, inshallah. So, um, so how does it work anyway? Because I didn't really go through that part of it. In terms of, you got to pay nine thousand pounds. Do you pay it like you have to pay it all in one go, or how does it work? Um, like, let, let, let's just assume. Let's let's say you you, you you're not going to take a loan. Yeah. Yeah. Like, let's say you have some money. Like, how would you pay that? Do you know? It's it's split up. So, I, I, if, if I remember correctly, I think like every few months maybe it's three i could be wrong every few months you pay like whatever three grand okay so it's like an installment thing yeah so it's an installment based on like i think the semester at least i remember that from the receipt that i had like every semester you pay and this is another thing like when it comes to money there is actually a lot of help other than the loan there's actually a lot of help um available like i found out after i graduated that there was a scholarship that you can apply for if you're part of like uh, Santander bank account or something like that. Like they okay. would pay you like five thousand, you know, wow. which is a lot. And yeah. it was there on offer. And there's there's loads and loads of other other op- offers and op- options for people mm. as well. Mm. But what so, about you then? So yeah. what what was your process? My process was um, okay. So basically, yeah, this uni La Sorbonne. I told you it's the oldest uni in France, I believe. Yeah, so yeah. it's like from eighteen something or maybe even seventeen something. Yeah. So they wanted to take that kind of brand of being known as this. It's it's especially known for humanities, yeah? Yeah. They wanted to bring it here. And uh, I guess, you know, like Abu Dhabi wanted to attract international students and they wanted yeah. to kind of be a uh, a bit of a uh, an education hub for yeah. people who are willing to travel to study, I suppose. So, um, so yeah, that's, uh, they want it, basically they want that cultural... Uh, soft power if you like yeah? yeah so part of that is going to be education so they they when did they open i think they opened first in 2006 and i was uh i was applying in 2008 to start in 2008 so it was only two years old so in order to encourage people to join they were giving uh scholarships if you got certain um levels right certain uh, marks so um i applied i can't remember this part but i applied and then they they did give me the scholarship, but I, I just had to pay for the uh, accommodation. Um, yeah, that was about it. Uh, just paid uh, for the accommodation, which wasn't that much actually. And uh, the I guess it was the government that covered the rest because they just wanted to get students going through this university, you know. 
Yeah. Um, and I remember like loads of people at that time had scholarships as well. So uh, that's why, for, for example, some of my, my best friends while I was uh, in uni, they were from Senegal, right? And they were like literally grew up and everything in Senegal. Uh, but they were very smart. They got into uh, this uni. They got a scholarship. If they didn't get scholarship, they would not be able to afford to go to the uni. Because, yeah. let me just tell you how much it was in pounds. I just need to calculate it on a sec. God, it's a lot of money. It I was got... <laughs> It was about like 13,000 a year. Oh, wow. Yeah, pounds, yeah? Yeah. So, like, no, no one can afford that, right? Um, so, so these guys, but these guys, because they got scholarship, they could come, and then loads of other people from all over the world could come purely because of this scholarship thing, and that's what made it such a rich experience. You know, you got people. Some people are rich and they just paid out their pocket. Some people are on scholarships and stuff. So it's like a well-rounded experience. Whereas now, because the uni's been there for like a while now, they don't give as many scholarships, and so. I'm guessing if you go there now, you're go only going to find a certain type of people who can afford all of that money yeah. there. So it's not going to be the same experience that's going to make you a kind of more well-rounded person, you know. Yes. So that, that, was, that was that scenario. But when, when I remember actually when I did the, the teacher training, the PGCE, I remember like talk, what, you, what you were talking about, paying uh, per term. Uh, so yeah, that's how that works. Yeah, I mean, I mean, at least it allows people to to sort of plan ahead. I know some people do take like a, a year break and work in it and save money, mm. but at the end of the day, like, what's the most you're going to make? Maybe thirteen, fourteen grand, yeah. unless if you don't touch anything, right? Yeah. Um, but like, so, I mean, at the moment for me, like, I'm so obviously I've got a boy now, uh, and I've started saving for his uni now because I know that one day, like, <laughs> that would help him. Why not? Yeah. yeah, why not? Because, you know, it, I'd love to be able to do that and just so he wouldn't have to have any, you know, anything on his head in terms mm. of debt and all that. Because the worst thing is leaving uni and getting that receipt, which yeah. just keeps, you know. So in your estimation, what percentage of students actually take loans in the UK to, to go uni? Oh, God, uh, that's a good question. Or maybe maybe if if you mostly know Muslims, like what percentage of Muslims do that? Um. It's, it's, the thing is, because it is such a controversial thing, people don't really like to explain. Oh, people like hide it, yeah? Yeah, like I don't talk about it, mainly right. because uh, at the time I didn't have a clue. So you got to remember, I started practicing late college, so my third mm. year of college, that right. year that I actually took to, you know, get my grades up. And I didn't yeah. really have much knowledge or at all. Like, And I remember my mentor at college told me, yeah, just apply for everything in terms of the loan. Just apply for the tuition, apply for the maintenance loan, apply yeah. for everything. Like every mm -hmm. box I could yeah. tick. She made me yeah. tick it. <laughs> Take as much as yeah. possible. I didn't need half of it because I was living at home. I didn't yeah. need like help with rent and all of that. I was living here. I didn't need that. Yeah. So, you know, at the end of it, when I was at uni, I was like, oh my God, what have I done? Like, I remember at mm. one point I was at uni thinking like, should I even still be here? Like, I've made such a terrible mistake. Mm. And then when I finished and I got the receipt, it was like 40 grand or something that I have to pay back that oh, keeps instead rising. Instead of 27. Yeah. It was so, it was, I, 40 grand is probably the generous amount. I can't remember the actual number. I'm sure yeah. it was much more. Wait, let me get this straight. So, uh, year one, you yeah. rent, uh, you, sorry, you borrow 9,000 pounds, let's say. Um, does the interest start adding up like after the just the yeah, first year? It, so, it you're going through uni month. and you're still getting added? Yeah. Even while you're still at uni? Yeah, and it adds even when you left uni. Like I was leave. Yeah, I remember yeah. I checked the receipt and I'd left uni, and the receipt came in April and it said, basically like I think I can't remember the either the interest rate went up or it went down. I can't remember either way the interest rate changed. But yeah. after I'd left uni, it was still like you could still see the added number that was going yeah. on. Like this month it was this much and this month it was this much. It's just right. crazy. Yeah. So so you did take the loan, but you didn't really know. But I think when you went. The, the interest rate was purely based on inflation, is which is what Possibly. they claimed, right? Possibly, yeah. I, I don't yeah. know the details. But like, like last two, three years maybe, it's not just based on inflation. It's actual real interest. Hmm. Which I mean, obviously from an Islamic perspective, I don't know if that makes a difference or not. But um, it's, I think it's a bit more now. Hmm. I mean, there is that discussion to be had. But the thing is with the tuition loan is that yeah. that tuition loan, you don't see it. It goes straight to the university. If you're doing it through student finance, like you never see that. It's yeah. the additional money that would get sent to my account just so I could live 
mm. which became the, unnecessary. That's the maintenance loan, right? Yeah, that's the main. Some yeah, of it that's was the grant. killer one. Yeah, some of it was a grant. Yeah. Some of it was a loan. I can't remember the, the, how much it was what, but yeah. it was just all unnecessary if I look back on it. Yeah, I think the maintenance loan is a killer because it's like, it's a bit, I don't know, it depends on the person, but it's a bit extra. It's like maybe you don't purely need it. It's yeah. it's a bit like, it's a bit like overdraft, you know? Yeah. Like, you, you, like you're living your life, let's say you've got a job, you want something to pay for something, a car or whatever, you take an overdraft. Right, that's like really unnecessary, and the interest rate is going to kill you. There's that running it's, joke. It's a running joke that every single beginning of term, all of the uh, all of the boys are now wearing Gucci belts and designer clothes because <laughs> their student loan has come through. Because that's what used to happen. Yeah. People would get their money through from the, the loan company, and mm. suddenly they'd buy like all designer clothing and all this stuff and just show off mm. with it. Then it was all gone. Then it's all gone. Yeah, so it's like not even teaching people to manage the money. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, for someone who, you know, there's people that yeah they're going to want to avoid that. Then your options are limited, but mm. there it's not you know it's not impossible. I'd so say. what are the options out there? So you already mentioned like you could take a year out, save some money, but it might not be that much money. Yeah, there's that. Yeah. There is there are scholarships you've mentioned yourself, but there are. Scholarships are available. They, they won't pay that entire fee, but yeah. they will definitely, you know, pay a, a significant amount. Yeah. There's something I saw recently. I need to look into it. It's like a, it's like a pot fund mm. where people around the world literally donate money into a pot, and mm. then you, as a as a potential student, give them like your sob story, essentially. Right. <laughs> Honestly, like you're, you know, this is what I want to do with my degree, and this is my dream, yeah. and this is my ambition, and mm. then I guess a decision is made whether to fund you or not. Okay, so and it's then, like a crowdfunded scholarship. Yeah, and then there's also I don't know too much about this, but there's obviously being you know educating yourself abroad. So I don't know how it works, but I'm sure there's certain countries where it's oh, you mean like free. going to Holland and stuff? I remember yeah. some yeah. UK students started going to Holland because it's free there. Exactly. And, there and are rules. And, English. There's rules and regulations regarding that, but it's something to look into. And then, obviously, the ultimate route is if you're really not going to go to uni, then you know there's Plan B and C, which is do your own thing or do some sort of vocational apprenticeship, something. Mm. To, there's or, one option which uh, I wanted to get into this example of this guy. His name's Ismail. Yeah. Um, I, I did an interview with him for that TV show we mentioned in episode one, I believe. Um, you know what he did? So his issue was not actually the loan uh, with the interest. Right? It wasn't just the interest that it was his problem. It was loaning money in the first place was his problem. Yeah. So so even as Muslims, we know loan taking loans, being in debt is a bad thing. It should be avoided. Yeah. You know, it's, sometimes it's, it's going to be necessary, etc. But if you can avoid it, avoid it. So based on that thinking, which is is, is something... It's a bit of an out-of-the-box mentality because most of us, we're like, oh, we just don't want the loan because haram. But actually, Ihsan is never loaning money anyway, right? Yeah. So what did he do is that he um, started a tuition business while he was at uni to pay. I mean, I'm assuming maybe he had enough money maybe for the first term. So he paid the first term, but then he, he started a tuition business where he was... Uh, tutoring people and I even think he organized for other people to tutor um, yeah. under his kind of organization and he got a cut something like that so um, he was I think helping like A-level students and he was even maybe teaching Arabic as well um, to uh, you know people that wanted to do that and ba using this business he paid for his whole degree That's right. Right? You're right so he he was like He's like, look, I don't want to take loan, even if there's no interest. I don't want to borrow money. And so he just found a way out to, to avoid that. And I believe now he, um, he has some kind of workshop where he talks about this and he might give you ideas on how you could do it yourself yeah. and stuff like that. And currently uh, he went to, where did he go? I think he went to LSE, right? Yeah. So he was at LSE and um, now he actually works for Google, I believe, in uh, Dublin, in their office in Dublin. So he ended up getting a good job after that, alhamdulillah. But also, uh, he got a business out of it, you know. Brilliant. So that's a really cool example. That's true. Like, you could essentially use 
you could use year zero or the college year to save up for the first year. You don't need to save up twenty seven grand in one go. Yeah, you, you don't. Can, all you need to do is save up for the year one, mm-hmm. get into year one, and then in year one get a side job and save for year two, and then save yeah. for year three. And you yeah. know you could do it like that. And and yeah. and, and, and to help with that, don't mm. go, don't bother going anywhere apart from your hometown. Like mm. stay where you're living because at the end of the day, I personally like people will speak about. We should speak about that actually. People right. talk about the experience and living on your own and all of that. Mm. I don't. I think the negative is outweigh the positives. Personally, really, yeah. Okay. I I personally don't see the point uh, in that because it, that experience will come eventually anyway. You will mm. one day you will leave the nest. But is there any need to pay that much and use all those expenses when you're really just in education? Mm. You're not. You're not. You know, and, and so, like I said, so stay at home, go to the uni that's closest to you. And, you know, if you're from a family of people that love and care about you and want to support you, you might not have to save all on your own. Yeah. You know, you could save five grand, your, the rest of your family could save a couple of grand each, whatever. I don't know. Allah, yeah. that's for the Especially people that if, have to help. If you're the type of person who your family and your family friends have seen you work hard through school and through college. They might then you, they're going to have a soft, soft spot for you. They're going to be like, look, you've always been working hard. Let me give you even a few hundred pound, a few hundred exactly. pound here, there, here, there, here, there. Exactly. You know, people raise money all the time for emergency situations. Like, you know, all this, I'm going to do a trek to exactly. Mount Batlikh and everything. I'm going to raise money. Will you sponsor me? Well, uh, that's cool. That, But that's for an, an urgent uh, short term kind of fix. But we also should invest in the long term fixes. So. Uh, even people, if you're listening to this and you like uh, have a job now and stuff, then maybe you should look out for someone that you think is a hard worker and they deserve that help, you know? No, no doubt. I mean, like now, I think I, I haven't been paid yet, but I think now my uni loan starts coming out. Like it's like a chunk of my money every year. So, ah, yes. Mm. So, so a lot of them, like it's just not nice. But if you can avoid that, and at the end of the day, it's not about, like you said, it's not about always going to be about the low uh, the interest and all of that it's about the fact that you're sticking your hand out because yeah. it's it, you feel like you've achieved something a lot more if you've sort of done it all for yourself you know yeah for sure i just want to plug um the ismail his his organization is called satifs uh s-a-t-i-f-s there's a double t or a double s but just search s-i uh, s-a-t-i-f-s and put ismail and you, it should pop up on Google, and mm. you might find one of his workshops or something. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, what was it I wanted to mention about we're, money? We're going to move oh. on. We were going to talk about yeah. the actual yeah. pros and cons of leaving the nest. Yeah. Okay. Right. It, wait. Wait. It? wait. <laughs> Just let's finish up finances about this yeah. whole uh, loan. Is it haram or not? Because I think oh, everyone's always been saying, "Don't worry." I mean, man. that's <laughs> so worry. controversial. No. <laughs> no, it's fine, man. I mean, look. If you can't take, not you personally. If if the listeners don't want to hear different things, then it's not. I don't think it's gonna be a good podcast for them anyway, right? So, uh, I just you don't have to comment. Yeah, I just want to <laughs> say there's different. Uh, as far as I've heard, is like everyone is has always been saying it's haram, even if it's just based on inflation. It's still a riba. Riba yeah. is a major sin. It's not a joke. It's definitely not worth a uni degree. It's yeah. definitely not worth whatever job you're going to get afterwards. Yeah. Um, of course, Sheikh Haytham came out and he said that, you know, based on his, uh, you know, an- analysis of the situation, he doesn't think it actually counts as a loan, a standard loan where you're getting interest on it. And it's riba. And it's a major sin. And so he said, based on what he thinks, it's not going to be riba. So it's not going to be haram. Um, me personally, because like people actually asked me to do a video about this, but I didn't do a video because it was too hot at the time. But um, my, year, like man. I'm someone that uh, actually follows Sheikh Haytham a lot, and I trust him with Fatawa. Um, and but personally, me, I would not do that. I wouldn't take the loan. I, I, it's just too much risk for me. Um, and you know, I know like he he has con- uh, what's the word consulted with others about this and he came to this conclusion not purely based on his own thing on his own but for me it's like such a big downside that i personally wouldn't risk it and i just think that if if 
I, I, in the end, I don't think a degree. I think there are other ways around it. Basically, yeah. I think I you could be creative to avoid avoid it in the first place. Uh, and we already gave an example of one way you could be creative. Uh, also, you can study abroad, maybe where it's cheaper. Also, maybe you don't have to go to uni and all of that. So I just yeah. wanted to mention that because it's an important point in the end. Because maybe some people um, they they hear of this fatwa and they either they they either confused about it and they like want to fight against it they're or just they're just going to take it and run with it. Yeah, that's the issue, isn't it? Like because that that as far as my knowledge goes, mm. that opinion sort of stands on its own just from him a lot yeah. like that's the most popular one that says it's fine that stands on his you know stands on his shoulders so to speak yeah um but you and know, in the you're... end you've got to be comfortable man and i wouldn't be comfortable that's why i wouldn't do it yeah so even I'm if i'm comfortable you know, now like yeah. despite despite it being done out of ignorance like yeah i wasn't comfortable when i found out i wasn't comfortable carrying on yeah i'm still not comfortable now but yeah. it is what it is yeah Okay, so about uh, leaving home for uni, uh, pros and cons. So you, you you said there's no benefit? I don't think it's worth it, essentially. Okay, not worth it in terms of you're going to spend terms, money. Yeah, because, the, okay, let's, let's list it out. The pros that people assume of moving out or going mm. yeah. to you go to uni elsewhere is you've got uh, the experience of, you know, fending for yourself and living off yourself and all of that. Right, you've got you know meeting new people and I don't know what else is there. <laughs> like, what else is it other than that that makes you want to move out? Um, I I did move out, and I just uh, I think if I didn't move out, I'd be very immature compared to now. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't have you know remember the all the growth I was talking about that wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't have learned how to budget. I wouldn't have. Uh, I don't know, spent so much time with other students, which yeah. was beneficial in my, in my uh, uh, experience, like in my circumstances. Obviously, yeah. if I was in the UK and I was in uh, dorms and there are people like drunk next door and all this rubbish, that's a completely different situation yeah. to my one, yeah. right? Yeah. So, the, but the, the benefits would probably still be there anyway. Like you don't have uh, your parents looking over you all the time, mm. which it, one benefit of that is that you now have to um, account yourself rather than your parents accounting you and holding you to account you have to like it, now it's like you're on your own and it's you and Allah mm. and you, it's you know and that day may very well come uh, sometime in your life you know most people uh, they're going to end up in that situation so you know that's it's, it's a good thing to kind of get used to that um, but I agree with you there are huge cons um and it depends massively on your on your situation. For example, where I was living, uh, actually they segregated uh, men and women. Okay, so yeah. they, that was segregated. Um, what else? Uh, obviously, there's no alcohol. There's no drugs. Um, there's no like th there are there were some clubs and stuff, but like it wasn't even part of the like no one was into that really. It wasn't the lifestyle, um, yeah. So, uh, th so the obviously in my scenario the risks are heavily reduced yeah um but having said that i don't i don't encourage uh girls to do it anyway right i think for guys it's a good thing but in the uk it's a whole other situation for me i'm gonna press um, the panic button now that's the panic button what's because <laughs> could you <laughs> every time you say something that could be <laughs> taken and run with i have to i have to just start holding my breath a little bit because that, <laughs> so that sounded like the old school uh, misogynist, I mean, coming out. It's not misogynistic, man. It's uh, it's mis misogynist is when you hate women. This is not out of hate, definitely not. I, I mean, outspoken doesn't want women to be educated. That's all they're gonna say. <laughs> no, no, I, I think, uh, in terms of education, I think you know, men and women should both be educated. Um, I'm just talking about living on your own and all of that. Mm -hmm. I think men need that. And I think men need to turn into men and they don't tend to mature um, on their own per se without certain responsibilities being forced upon them. Yeah. Right. And that's the specific benefit 
for a guy living on his own early at an earlier age because he's going to turn into a man in an earlier age like he should already be a man at like 16 but that's how it is these days and so wanna, it, instead wanna, if he can do that. that at 18 then that would be good i think as yeah. for girls they don't have to worry so much about that they become mature uh, they're fine and also obviously man like my protective side comes out so that's why i'm not gonna suggest <laughs> I'm not going to be hypocritical, yeah? I'm not, I'm not going to uh, be comfortable with my daughter going and living on her own. So why am I going to pretend that I'm comfortable on this podcast? That's the thing. Like, I need to flip it now because we have... My mind's gone blank. SubhanAllah. I was going to say, mm. uh, the negatives yeah. are... like So all the positives that you've laid out, essentially, yeah. in my head, I'm thinking, well, I can get all of those positives after I finish uni. You know, yeah. I can just move out after I finish uni. I can do this after I finish uni. So all of those positives of experiencing and growth and uh, I don't see the problem waiting three years and just doing that when I'm done, mm. you know. And also when you spoke about being a man and the responsibilities, you know, being thrusted upon you, yeah, I feel like, you know, the greatest man is the one who can actually be at home and help his family that he already has instead of just thinking of himself. Because at the end of the day, when you do move out, a lot of the focus just becomes on yourself. It becomes on, oh, you know, like my own needs and my own, you know, f- fulfillments, as opposed yeah. to think of the man who's, okay, I've got my responsibility of educating myself. I've also got to, you know, help my parents but at home. Uh, if they need anything, I'm there to support them. If anything happens from like, my siblings, I'm there to help them out. Like yeah. in my head, that's the man, because mm. at the end of the day, when you do start your own family, you would have, thought to yourself well I, I i have the experience of being there and providing and making sacrifices and you know all of those aspects so that's as far a very as, very good point muhammad seriously thank that's you. a good one it's, it's, only, i say that because that was my experience yeah. my life changed when i started going to college i stopped asking my parents for money like mm. because i got a job and that was it since then i've never asked my you know my parents for a dime because I, I haven't needed to and I you know essentially I was I've been at home since more or less you know yeah. Alhamdulillah like you know now I'm in a position where I can leave the nest yeah. and I've got a family on my back and my, my you know my son and my wife and I wouldn't say I'm any less of a man for not going to uni for right. not moving out yeah, yeah. Essentially, I know? think that's a very good point man and I think your situation is kind of ideal where you do stay at home and you do have responsibility and you do kind of become mature uh, without having to leave home of course who's going to encourage people to leave their parents uh, behind and stuff mm. like no no one's going to do that um i uh, i think your your scenario is pretty a uh, pretty good one i think mm. if i didn't leave i don't think i'd be in your situation though that's that's what i'm yeah, thinking because it depends yeah. on your individual family s- setup you know yeah uh, but I, like that's why uh, inshallah when i have kids i'll I'll, like I'm not thinking about 18, my son becoming a man. I'm gonna f- force it on him when he's like 14. You know, oh, yeah. I'm gonna uh, because because of my uh, experience, I realize there's no reason that a, a, a boy, if you want to call him a boy, even though really at 14 you're a man, yeah. Uh, there's no reason that he can't hold responsibility at that age. And if you don't give him it, you're just you're not allowing him to grow. Like he's fully capable. Um, it's just that we, we, because of compulsory schooling and all that, we're taking the responsibility off the back which, when it's naturally there, you know? It is, yeah. So I think you're right. I think everyone's got to kind of weigh out uh, their individual circumstances and how much, basically, how much of a kind of uh, silver spoon that you've got in your mouth. I've, kind of thing. I've always had this, um, this like subconscious hatred for external influencing. Right. So not with you know not with anything dini and or islamic or whatever but when it comes to like i want to do x so i need to i need this to make me feel a certain way so that right. i can do that so like yeah a good example is like going to work out like mm. people can't work out unless they have music so mm. i need music to help me work out better yeah, yeah. you know and th- this reminds me of that like i want to be a mature uh i want to stand on my own feet i want to be a, a man so yeah. I need to go to uni so I can learn how to be a man. Mm. You know, I don't like that. I think you, you know, I don't like the fact that people can't just 
try and switch something on in their head instead of getting something else to switch it on for them. Well, low Alan, like, you know, that, that's a very broad generalization. But, yeah. you know... That's a good you, point, though. You know, at, at, like you said yourself, like at 16, at 14, at whatever, like, you're, you're, the kid should be able, if he wants to be a man, which a lot of kids do, a lot yeah. of people are like, I want to grow up, I want to grow up, you can yeah. treat them like a man until they do something that isn't grown up. You know? Yeah, that's because a good point. you punish... punish <laughs> Punish a kid like a kid yeah. when he does something wrong. But mm-hmm. when he's doing something good, they treat him like a man. Mm. This, is why, bro, I, this is why I wanted to separate the uh, episode we do about uni and about kind of education or schooling. Because yeah. that's a whole other topic and that's a really good topic to go into. Inshallah, we'll go into that. Um, the last thing to cover, I think, in this whole uh, in this in this episode is... Like, is uni worth it? And like, is it worth it anymore? Is it worth the money? Is it, do you value it based on career? What do you value it based on, etc.? Mm. So what's your conclusion? Because I noticed you've been talking a lot about money and it's not worth it. It's not worth the yeah. money. I paid this much money. I didn't see the value. So mm. how do you see it? Uh, once again, it would be unfair for me or you to give a sweeping statement based on our own experiences because I can say now that yeah my degree did lead me to a job but I don't know actually how much of my degree actually got me that job because yeah. there are people that are now in my job that didn't have my degree there you, you go. know so you know it's it's it, it's heads or tails isn't it but mm. for certain jobs we can't argue like if you want to be a lawyer you uni if you want to be a doctor uni do you know what I mean we can't mm. there's no ways around that right now yeah but if that isn't your goal and that isn't where you're heading then the world's your oyster really isn't it mm. yeah i mean so for someone someone to do something creative like i don't know graphic design or whatever we know how many i mean me and you we've done yeah. a bit of business how mm. many graphic designers do we know that never studied yeah loads. you know but they do an amazing work and it's you know sometimes what you can produce out of your own time is better than what anyone can teach you mm-hmm. yeah so so basically what you're saying you're saying it's worth it if you're going in a specific field that requires a degree yeah. or yeah of course and if you do want yeah. to and we, like we said if, if it requires if your career path requires it then there's no argument yeah. if it's something that you want to do for yourself then we've spoke about the the if you desperately want to do it and the money's a problem, then we spoke about the alternative methods that may be yeah. available to you. Yeah. But if you all, if you just want to do it because you want to do it and you're prepared to, you know, you don't want to take a loan, but you're just stuck, then maybe it's not worth the money. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Good points. Um, <laughs> but what I don't see, the thing is, yeah, I don't see education um, as a purely career-focused thing. Because like I said, I went to uni because I wanted to just learn. Yeah. honestly and probably that's because like i had a scholarship and stuff like there's no pressure for me to turn this degree into um a money uh, an asset if you like yeah um but uh, obviously i was thinking about that and i did spend like three years of my life as a big investment in terms of time uh into something I, of course i did think it would end up in a career but it wasn't something i was focused on as the main priority i was like look i'm gonna go uni i'm gonna learn about about geography and uh, human in like in general yeah human how humans are how they interact with the environment i'm going to learn about these different cultures all of this stuff yeah i'm going to develop and that's what i was in it for mostly um and that's also like when i spoke to ismail he's like he's like yeah why are we why is everyone talking about the cost of uni versus the job what about what about back in the day like before schooling was compulsory like i'm talking about 19th 18th century when yeah. it, the cool thing for like the rich people in in Europe and stuff to do was to travel around Europe and just learn and like that was the like getting cultured and all this that's what they would do and they would obviously travel a lot it would be expensive it would take a lot of their time but they did it purely to be cultured because it was a status thing no doubt but it was purely to just learn and like know about the world and stuff mm. So, and obviously in Islam, we know like learning is very important in general. Uh, Islamic uh, sciences, as well as other sciences and humanities and stuff is very important. Um, and so one measure of it is, is the career side. And then there are other measures of it in terms of even the connections you make, the network you develop through 
going to uni. These are also important things. Yeah. So there's a lot going into it. And uh, I, I was listening to uh, something that Peter Thiel said, who's uh, one of the co-founders of PayPal. Um, he he was talking about uni. He's like, uni's a mess right now. Obviously, he's, a, he's American. He's talking about America, where it's much, much, much more expensive to go to uni. He's saying the way people approach university is like an insurance policy. Yeah. They don't act like people talk about it as an investment, but an investment is approached differently to an insurance policy. He said people go uni without knowing if it's going to help them with the job. They don't really know. They have no idea. Yeah. yeah. But it's something to cover their back in case uh, they need it down the line. They need a degree. So that the way that I just described that, that's exactly what an insurance policy is. You yeah. pay for something if something unknown happens in case kind of thing. Yeah. So uh, the way you approach, I think what, what I wanted to get out about this is that there are different angles to think of uni and its value to you. And uh, it's not just about career. It's not just about learning. Um, it's not just an insurance policy. There's many things, Yanni. So it's, inshallah, we, like, we could broaden the way we think about it. And I think personally, if I was that age right now, I would, it would be unlikely I go to uni, especially if I knew what I knew now. Yeah. Uh, because I, I agree with what you said, like, if you're not going to be a doctor or an engineer or these kind of very, you know, you know uh, uni focused stuff. things, yeah. yeah, then I think there are other ways around it, you know, by, for example, diving into whatever experience you can get at age 17, 18, uh, that might get you a lot of places. Um, but also I remember seeing, uh, actually it was like the first day at uni when I was doing my teacher training, they said 60% of employers just want you to have any degree. Yeah. They don't care what you did in your degree. As long as you've got one to them, that just proves like you're kind of serious. You've got enough discipline to kind of get through these three years, do some exams and all of that. So exactly. that, yeah, that's yeah, another that's thing as well. But, you know, I know a guy, for example, I, actually, I just saw him yesterday. He, um, he's a freelance uh, designer um, as well as he's actually a, he's also a director for different like he works on like, you know, NBC, the Arab TV channel. It's yeah. based in Saudi. It's like the biggest TV network in the Arab world. Um, he, he's, uh, he got commissioned to do filming and directing and stuff for some of their shows. And all he did was he did one of those BTEC things and then he did something more advanced, some kind of diploma. And it was all in a college and he paid like £2,000 a year to do a two-year thing. And then he just got loads of experience just through knowing people, getting jobs here and there until he's got a sick portfolio. Mm. And now he like works for himself. He gets uh, these jobs coming in and stuff. So uh, like it depends on many, many factors, I think. SubhanAllah. I just looked at the time. Mm -hmm. Didn't realize we've been talking for so long. Yeah, fifty. <laughs> I felt like minutes. we still had like halfway to go because there was so much else. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's a good topic. Should, should we move on to questions? Yeah, let's do questions. God, do we even have a question we can we can answer quickly? Yeah, we do. Ooh. We have the 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 role models one. That's not really a question, but we can deal with it anyway. Uh, oh, the correction. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, brother here. His initials are RQ. He sent us, regarding our Role Models uh, podcast episode, he sent us a fatwa that someone asked, is it permissible for us to take uh, non-Muslims as our role models when it comes to strictly dunya purposes? For example, if I say, believe Bill Gates is my role model in regards to how he's such a successful businessman, and not in his religious beliefs, is this allowed? Mm. And the reply from the Sheikh was, wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is not befitting a Muslim to take a non-Muslim as his role model, even in issues pertaining to dunya. Mm. That was that was it. That was all the, the, yeah. the answer was. Um, in response to that, what I'd like to say is, um, I think... Personally, I think we made the mistake, really, of using the word role model. Like, that's my opinion anyway. I don't know about you. My opinion is, I think role model itself carries a lot of weight. I think it's a very heavy word to say role model because it just sort of, 
it's sort of it's almost like oh I'm putting a poster of this person on my wall because he's my role model, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as you know, I can't think of another word that really encapsulates just you know taking initiative from someone else. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's but, what I wanted to say. I think it's it's a it's semantics basically. It's like yeah. Uh, we I agree. the The right term is not role model because, in general, in general culture, when you say role model, it's like you said, it's someone you want to be like them. You want their character. You want their yeah. behavior. And yeah. so, in that case, yeah, I would agree, hundred percent. Like, it's the wrong word. Um, yeah, but but uh, obviously, we can learn from everyone because uh, you know, wisdom is the lost property of the believer. You could take. Bit like beneficial strategies, yeah. information, etc. But role model is a heavy word. Like I mean, you if said. you if you used if we replaced role model with teacher, like oh, if Bill Gates taught me, you know, can I learn uh, business from Bill Gates? Yeah. Like if I, if if that was the question, then it'd be different. I mean, we need to note that the sheikh that answered this, mm. may Allah bless him, he isn't actually. Mm. Uh, I believe he, English isn't. You know, he's not an English sheikh. He's not from England mm. or the West. He, mm. So that sometimes can be lost in translation as well. Like role model to him might mean what we just said, like a whole entire. Yeah. You know, encapsulates your entire life. Like you just want to be that guy. So yeah, exactly. But yeah, Barakallahu for the for for the brother that sent that because yeah. that did actually make us think. And then you know, we're yeah. open to that. If anyone wants to say something and correct us and advise us, we are more than open. We'd love to. Yeah, talk about. And that we'll because... even we'll even read your correction on the podcast <laughs> itself, unless it's like just hate mail because I ain't got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there anything else short? Uh, let's have a look. Short, short, short. Really, I should prepare these before. But listen, this week I've been so all over the place. I haven't had time to repair. I literally just got in, and Amin was, alhamdulillah, Amin was available to record. So, apologies for that. Let me see. Um, a lot of stuff is quite long, quite deep. Um, Why don't we just deal with the driving one? <laughs> Because we can answer that quickly. Okay, let me read this then, because I I saw that. (laughs) Uh, This is from Initials NR. Salaamu Alaikum. I think you should do a podcast about your experience learning to drive, if you did, and everything about driving instructors, schools, and so on. A lot of Muslims earn a living through starting a driving school business. But more than that, I'd like to hear your experience in getting your license. I'm currently taking lessons, and it's been a mission for me, and I could talk about it for hours. I have a lot to say about it, but what are your instructions like? What, no, what were your instructors like? When did you start? You could you could branch into other areas, like should women drive? That is, that is so... Like, just to ask that... Sorry, yeah, just to ask that question, should women drive? I don't know who this person knows who we are. That's just so... <laughs> like, anyway, taking lessons with men, who is better at driving men or women, and is it always halal as some cheat? I didn't know that people cheated. Uh, some cheat, which I didn't want to believe, but have found mm. out that it's true. Uh, P.S. It's not a trap. I'm not a feminist. You can say men are better drivers. I won't cry. Thanks. <laughs> All right. I think, personally, if I can just jump in, uh, I this is the best time because I literally just got a car today. And my wife is learning to drive, and I just got her insured today. As like a okay. learner driver, and she's just started doing her lessons as well. So, um, as far as me, God, I well, I did my theory. I failed my theory first time, but mm. then I passed it my second time, and then when I came to my practical, I passed it with no faults whatsoever first time. So that's my experience. How about you? Uh, the first uh, practical I failed, the second one I passed. But then I did that here in the UAE, so it, it eventually expired and I couldn't renew it because I wasn't a resident here. So then I had to do the whole thing in the UK, um, but I passed on the first time there. And oh, uh, yeah, I did, I did manual here, actually. Oh, sorry, I did automatic here. Then when I did it the second time in the UK, I did manual. So. I, need, I need to speak about that because yeah. this car that I just got is an automatic and I've always driven yeah. manuals. Right, and for some it's much reason, better, isn't it? No, no, no. For some reason, in my head, I had yeah. I had it in my head that I need to use my left foot to brake, the mm. left foot that I actually usually oh, no. use on a clutch. Yeah. So what ends up happening is I'm hitting it like you I would hit a clutch. 
yeah, I can't help it. And I just <laughs> slammed the brakes. And my father-in-law was with me and my brother-in-law was with me. And they were just shouting at me like I'm an idiot because I'm just slamming the brake like a crazy person. <laughs> I just couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. And then, like, obviously today I sat to myself. I was like, wait, why am I even using my left foot? Because in a manual, I just use my right to yeah. brake and to accelerate. Yeah. As soon as I like, as soon as that clicked in my head, I was like, "Oh, this isn't too bad." <laughs> it was awful. Yeah, because you're never going to accelerate and brake at the same time. Yeah, for some reason, I just thought two pedals, two feet. Like that yeah. was what was in my head. So it's fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's there we go. What have we got here? Um, so let's just. I, I, by the way, I didn't know anyone. I've actually I've seen people cheat. Not in the UK, but here I've seen people cheat. I've seen mm. people like. Actually, when I did my uh, test, my practical test, I saw someone, he must have known the, because the police do it here, yeah? Or they used to do it when I did it anyway. Um, this guy must have known the policeman or whatever. So he like skipped the queue, he jumped in the car. And uh, like basically the people that are taking the test, they'll be in a car behind the main car, right? Ah. Right? So that's how they, they used to do it. And so this guy just came out of nowhere. He jumped in the police car, he did the test. And then he just got out and then he got back into his friend's car and drove off and he got a pass. Wow. So that kind of, <laughs> like jumping the queue and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, that definitely happens. I mean, yeah. it happened here at least. I hear a lot about, like, you know, in, in countries back home, so to speak. Like, I heard people just paying for licenses. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, they grew up on a farm and they can drive anyway because they're driving tractors or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And then they just pay for a license. I mean, Actually, here, over here, there's loads of underage drivers mm. and they just drive from, like, the age of 15 or whatever. And just uh, it's normal. Yeah, I guess here, like the only cheating I've ever seen is um, theory tests. So they right. just they'll get someone else to go in with like an ID and do their test for them. But mm. it's not really easy to, to cheat anymore. You gotta I be don't... pretty dumb to do that, though. I mean, <sighs> it's not hard. I mean, it's getting harder. I know, but still. What else have we got? Uh, when did you when did you take when did you pass when do you get your license at first what age I passed at 18 but right. all of my driving after that was done in Tunisia mm. like because I didn't get a car for a while okay uh, so I'd go to Tunisia and just rent cars so I learned mm. everything like backwards because right. everything's all the other way around over there yeah uh, what we got let's see I just want to address this as, as efficiently as possible so should women drive uh, yeah I'm not even going to argue with that like what do you think what do you, what do you mean think they of me? Should. They have you to. misogynist? No, I mean, there's no reason why not. Feminists are coming for you, I mean, I, I promise you. I'm, I'm ready, you. Allah. <laughs> I've been training for a few years. <laughs> should they take lessons with men? Uh, I don't think so. My wife, I found a female instructor that can help her, so I did that. I personally just, I don't know. Actually, I mean, there's that's something the I read in the, the I read a, an article about a Muslim woman who's starting a driving school just for women. I think yeah, in London, I read that somewhere. There are a lot. There's, oh, there are a lot here, of them. Okay. There's, yeah, there's well, I don't know about Muslims, but down here I've got there's all sorts of female-only driving instructors. Okay. Like they only hire females. I don't know. So okay. Uh, yeah. So I just thought, why not? I mean, I don't. Yeah, really... of course, that would be the preference. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so... like. Uh, I don't know why a Muslim woman would want to be alone in a car with a man and vice versa. I yeah. wouldn't take uh, lessons with a woman myself. Uh, it would... So again, it's not even an issue of haram or halal. It's like, why would a Muslim even want to do that? Yeah. Next one is, who is better at driving, men or women? Go on, I mean. <laughs> Say your controversy. No, Spit honestly, it out. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't do this whole... Uh, Stereotype thing, uh, really. I, don't, well, I will I, say, I don't I'll see s- the difference. I'll say that men, I think women are safer in terms of just getting to A to B. Yeah, yeah I'd say that, that because, that's true. Yeah. but when it comes to spatial awareness, mm. I think men are better. I think mm. parking, just knowing the size of your car, and to be honest, like I remember re- like reading that in biology, so apparently it's like a biological thing. Allah oh. <laughs> it's a fact, it's science. <laughs> It's science. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah definitely. Women are safer because, firstly, they're, they're going to be more careful. But also, men are either confident, more confident, or they're overconfident, yeah. and that will make them more dangerous drivers. Uh, is it always? Hello? Oh, we spoke about the cheating thing. So yeah, I think we've we've essentially hit all these points. I mean, okay, there's quickly we'll finish up with like instructors. My mm. instructor was fine. He was like just a quiet, you know. 
middle-aged man and he was really really good with me i don't know about you how about you uh okay so when i first took the test i don't remember him at all but i guess it was okay uh, it was basically like he just told me get in the car because it, it was automatic remember so he's yeah. just like get in the car and just literally just drive around like literally that's all we did so it was very because also the test here was easy and stuff back then um when i did it in the uk my instructor was terrible if i didn't already know how to drive I think I would have either punched him or I would have like failed because oh, he was so bad, man. Like, no, I mean, don't, oh, don't oh. speak about that. You're going to punch people. Come on. We're meant to be good people. Okay. Sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just hyperbole. Yeah? Like, obviously, I, I don't hit people. Yeah. That's just. Uh... I thought I was going to be the dangerous one in this. I really thought you're going to have to like keep me on. But, bro, you're so blowing far, it out of proportion. Man. So far, subhanAllah, you don't want women to, to go to school, right? <laughs> women are whatever you said. I can't remember. And now you talk about punching people. Like, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm going to get a lot of emails correcting us next week. And it's just going to be a pain going through. I don't all. think anyone minds, man. It's, it's cool. It's calm. <laughs> I'm just pulling your leg. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> but let's... seriously, no, I know you're worried. You are, there's a there's a hint of truth to it, but I don't <laughs> think it's a big deal at all. But you're making it a big deal, Muhammad. I'm spicing it up. I'm yeah. the chili. I'm the harissa to this podcast. <laughs> uh, it's good as well because you're Tunisian, <laughs> so it makes sense. Um, what's right, it called? I mean... um, yeah, no, wait, the instructor though, I'll tell you the reason I said that is because, you know, like, if I, if I made a mistake, he would uh, act as though it was his problem that I made the mistake. He'd be like, why are you doing that? Like, you're so pathetic. <laughs> like, literally, that's, that's the yeah. tone he used. He's like, you're so pathetic. How could you make that mistake? Yeah. And that, that, that's the type of thing that if you're a new driver, you're not confident. You, that would just ruin the whole thing, man. And I was going to tell him, but then I just thought, like, you know, like, I'm going to pass soon, inshallah, so just leave him. He's the type of guy that probably wouldn't listen anyway. Yeah. Let him get on with his life, Annie. There you go, man. Everyone's different. I mean, I wish I could say more about the topic, but I guess my experience was quite straightforward, so it <laughs> it's, is what it is. It's a pretty random question. That's why we were laughing when we took it. We were like, like it's so random if you think about driving instructors people cheating hey. i mean i appreciate the question because we ended up speaking for a good 10 minutes or whatever about it but it's well, just so random like i want more like that really yeah, because yeah, all the same. other ones are very like you know your typical questions like, yeah yeah well, that, that, more more harissa please in the questions <laughs> well let's uh let's close this one up inshallah inshallah uh, what are you doing lately? Anything we can find you on? Any projects you're doing? Um, so, uh, as you know, uh, if you search Mind Heist on iTunes or on uh, Stitcher, you're going to find the podcast. But I started uploading them on my YouTube channel as well. So uh, maybe we'll do it, its own YouTube channel in the future. I don't know. But for now, I'm just putting them there on my channel. So if you just search Mind Heist on uh, YouTube, you can find them there if that's how you prefer to listen. Um, there's no video to it. Um, and is there anything me specific to uh, just my videos, man? If you search Sera Masters, you're going to find my videos. You can watch my weekly videos, inshallah. Uh, this week, actually, l last Friday, I put out a video about how uh, visiting Algeria very often uh, changed my life. So I think that's a good video that a lot of people will enjoy and find insightful. That. I was meant to go back and watch that. Mm. Um, what am I doing lately? Absolutely nothing. This work schedule has taken over my life busy man. Uh, i'm so i'm really struggling you know before i got this car it took me two hours to get to work and two hours to get back and oh. i and and, and it's, i'm not commuting to london or anything it's literally just the next town but it is what it is alhamdulillah uh, you can find me on the twitters and on the instagrams i deactivated my facebook the other day really yeah i'm just well, not guess... feeling it I have to talk and, about that in another episode. Yeah, I think I would like to. Um, uh, what else? That's it, really. I don't really use Snapchat. Um, yeah, alhamdulillah, Aki tweet. And that's it for this email, week. Email address. Email. email us. Oh, yeah, there's two things you guys need to do. You can email us at mindheistpodcast at gmail.com. You can also 
leave us a review on uh, the podcast app. Here's a quick tip. A lot of people message me saying they couldn't get their reviews in. Hmm. The reason being, when you put your review in the podcast app, it will ask you to provide a nickname. For some reason, sometimes you click send and it just nothing happens. I found out the reason why is because the nickname you've put in is already taken. So you have to put a, a you know a nickname with random numbers in it. Apple doesn't tell you that your nickname is taken, so you just have to do a bit of trial and error with the names that you pick up, and inshallah it will go through. We've got okay. some reviews already, so that's just a bit of logistics. But yeah, inshallah, leave us a good review if you've enjoyed the show. If you didn't enjoy the show, don't leave us a review, but go and message Amin and send him hate mail. Yes, that will, that was, that's preferable, yeah? Well, there's, there's 10 <laughs> reviews, so that's a good start. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. If we can get it, if this time next episode... We can get to, you know, 15 at least. That will be nice. <laughs> that will be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, this has been Aki Tweet and Amin. Jazakallah khair for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.